So we're gonna run out, same zone. It's been mind blowing. There's no other way to explain it. Have you ever done any of this tagging before? We've gotten together with Barbara Block in conjunction with CCA of California. And what we're trying to do here is go out and get a satellite tag in a big model bluefin that we can learn from. Oh, there oh, it is. Well, did it go down? Did it go down? Wait, 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 wait. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. When I think about bluefin tuna, a few things really come to mind. I think about well, the biggest tuna, so that's obviously attractive to fishermen. When I also think about bluefin tuna, I think about the differences between the fish in different areas. We got the two big rods. What else do we want to get? The flat falls out. Throughout the years, I've caught lots and lots of tunas, you know, but for me, it's been mostly blackfin tuna. Fishing with Ali has opened up a whole nother spectrum of tuna fishing for me. So we've chased bluefin tuna off San Diego. It never really was our bread and butter fish until the last four years. So what's the deal? You're gonna pull out all the stops? Sounds like they've been eating a little bit of everything. I mean, do we wanna be ready for everything or are we just gonna go one technique and that's it? No, lately, man, we, were, we had been doing just the dead flyer a lot with a side of yummy flyer. And fortunately for Southern California guys, we've got this influx of these really, really big bluefin. But like I keep telling you, these things change their mind for some reason midway through the season. It's just been a ride that I couldn't have dreamed of when I was a younger guy. Yeah, 12 o'clock, they're blowing up like crazy. You know, and as timing would line up, we started doing local knowledge about five years ago. Here they come, here they come. We started doing local knowledge and I came on the scene. This fishery started coming about in San Diego where they started seeing these larger grade bluefin tuna. Oh, I'm on! And you know, we were doing our normal thing there the first season or two, just chasing the smaller fish and all that. And then you see right in the middle of season one, big old tuna. Rush and I go out, we lay down a plan and we bring home a big bluefin. You know, Ali doesn't have a lot of specialties, especially when it comes to fishing. But one thing, you know, he is passionate about, and he, you know, he does know a thing or two about is tuna fishing. <laughs> that is a jumbo. Have you ever done any of this tagging before? The only bluefin I've tagged have been with a gaff. It's gonna be a new experience. As much as this has been a boon for fishermen like myself in Southern California, for the scientific community, this is like, it's unprecedented. Nobody really understands why these fish are here. Like we know what happened hundred years ago, right? It's very well documented, kicked off this whole bluefin fishery. So we're beginning to piece the story of the Pacific together, but the puzzle's not yet done. We've gotten together with Barbara Block in conjunction with CCA of California. AFCO has been a really big supporter. And what we're trying to do here is go out and get a satellite tag in a big model bluefin that we can learn from. And this second attachment is what allows it all to work, so. In my line of work, in my profession, you never know what kind of opportunity is gonna present itself to you. After catching enough of these fish, it's cool to not kill them anymore and just release them, you know? Give back to the fishery. I'm so happy you guys are here to help us with Tag a Giant and CCA's effort to put these tags on Pacific bluefin tuna. So this is one of the most advanced oceanographic pieces of tagging equipment on the planet. It's a pop-up satellite archival tag. So the goal for this trip is to go out, several boats will be fishing, we're all trying to catch that 200 pound bluefin, give or take. And the way it works is today, if you catch a fish alley, we're gonna come up to you and we're gonna pass you a tennis ball. We want you to hook it on to your leader once you get that fish wound up, and then you're gonna cut it, and we're gonna wind it back to the boat, pull it through the door, 
put it on a mat, put a hose in the bluefin's mouth, and then hopefully we're gonna put on a pop-up satellite archival tag. And then on a predetermined date that's programmed into the tag, we're gonna get a little electrolysis. This is gonna pull out and the float is gonna take it to the surface. And at the surface, that's the only place radio transmissions to an Earth-orbiting satellite can be heard. It'll send all its data back to the lab. And then we can really learn about what this fish has been doing for the last year. Local knowledge is brought to you by Evinrude, Penn, let the battle begin, Yeti, built for the wild, Seakeeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it, Seagar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines, Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle, Nomad Design, crafted by experience, and by bdoutdoors.com. So we're gonna run out, same zone we fished recently, try and get a big model. And then what we're gonna do is Barbara Block from Stanford is there, she's putting satellite tags on bigger fish and acoustic tags in smaller fish. And I think 14 was the first year we had heard rumors of bigger bluefin. One had been caught here, one had been caught there. And you know, as soon as I heard the rumors, I talked to a buddy, I heard he got one, and he was like, dude, go do the Cabo program, put your kite out, put a yummy flyer underneath it, and go skip it around on the 43, which is one of our normal fishing spots. You know, me and my partner Jason recruited a buddy. We ran out to the 43 and it was surreal. Within 30 minutes of putting the kite out, we had a 163 pound bluefin tuna in the boat. Let's go ahead and get the kite built, put a balloon on it. We'll put this thing up. We'll start looking around if we find a mark. We'll either drift on it or maybe we'll skip the yummy a little bit here and look around. Just like anything, when you talk about the ocean or fishing or whatever, you'll identify patterns after a few years. And you kind of learn that, you know, they're gonna do this this time of year, then they're kind of gonna do that. It's not always the same, which for us as fishermen has been awesome. You know, we had to adapt our techniques. We had to adapt the way we fish. Next thing you know, you can't buy a popper in Southern California, they're sold out. Guys in Southern California are like, hey, do you think we could use this big spinning gear to catch a tuna? And it's so funny because like, that's been done all over the world. We were doing that in Mexico 15 years ago, catching big yellowfin on poppers, but our guys just don't know. So it's been this really cool evolution of learning to catch these fish, learning the phases that they go through, whether it's popper mode, foamer mode, um, switching over to the yummy flyer. And now the big thing the last couple of years has been the dead flyer. Hey, Ellie. Hey man, I'm on those numbers and I am marking them. So I just put the kite up, I'm gonna skip it around a little bit, try and figure it out and then set up here and drift. In oh. Southern California, we have a saying and we always say, oh, it's bluefin being bluefin. And that can mean a lot of things. Typically it means they're all show, no go. You'll see them foaming like crazy on that small bait. And for whatever reason, we will literally throw the kitchen sink at them. Every popper, every lure, every bait, every everything, and you can't buy a bite. No, this isn't what we want, but we're gonna slide up here a little bit and drift. We marked some good fish in here and haven't seen anything anywhere else. So let's just kind of sit here and wait. A On this specific trip, we had a lot of boats out there. There wasn't, it wasn't just us this time trying to find these fish. We had a lot of different boats out there trying to divide and conquer. What do you think? Move up where you, they were seeing them earlier? Two miles above, look around there. The funny thing about these fish and pretty much like any fishery, just when, oh, we got it figured out, we got it dialed in, something changes. The other time when we say it's bluefin being bluefin, they are notorious for biting like crazy and you know, for weeks on end and then all of a sudden, pew, they're gone. Well, Rush, I'm just not seeing it here. So let's, uh, let's bring the dead bait in. We'll put the yummy back out and just go look around a little, see if we can locate some meter marks or get a yummy bite. And when that happens, it really puts the pressure on you to be able to locate them, figure out what they're doing now and reset. In the case of this trip, 
just a couple of days before we were supposed to go, the fish had scattered. There was just a little bit of fish left at the island. We were able to find a few of those fish, but for whatever reason, they were acting like bluefin. Man, we're not seeing a lot. I'm uh, looking at odds and ends, one here, one there, but. In the end, we had four or five boats of very good Southern California fishermen out chasing these fish, and unfortunately, we all came up empty. How far is the run, bud? It's gonna be a good one, like 60, 65. One thing that Rush and I both do not enjoy is losing. And on that day, we lost. So fast forward a couple of months, we're gearing up to do another shoot, and you can guess what's the first thing that we wanna do. The fish have been gone for like a month. Like since we tried to go out there and tag one, right. they have not really been around. They showed up for like maybe a week since then, and then they've been totally gone. I just got some intel that they're back. So with this next trip coming up, we reached back out to Dr. Block and her team, and they were cool enough to send us down some spaghetti tags. Fishing's frustrating. Sometimes you get them and just sometimes you don't. You just can't give up, you know, and me and Ali both agreed that it was worth giving it another shot. Every sailfish we caught when I was a kid, we used to tag. Tag them, that's awesome. So you know the program, put it on the tip, the point is actually on the tip. And then we're gonna hit that guy in the shoulder, right in the right shoulder above the peck yeah. fin, give or take. Every day is different, and we all know what a difference a day makes. So we're gonna do something a little different. We've been using that treble hook in the back. We're gonna change to a regular, another J. So I'm gonna try and run two J's off of it. Haven't done it. I have a feeling we're not gonna have the same hookup ratio, but there's been some fish in here, and the fish have been gone, but we know there's fish in here now, so hopefully we get a couple of cracks, enough to get a hook in the corner of the mouth. And that's just for tagging purposes. Just so we can that. release this fish, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. So. The first thing I like to do is kind of go to the last place where I knew the fish were and look around. In this case, I went where we had them a few days earlier, didn't see them right away. Now it's going into hunt mode. So we kind of switch gears a little bit. We put the kite out and we put the yummy flyer underneath it. Holy smokes, that's a good one. There's something about seeing. And it's seeing, at 100 feet now. There's something about seeing that, you know, just gives you hope, you know. You, you're out here a certain day. Last time we were out here, trying to tag one. I mean, I don't think we marked a fish in two days. We marked like a couple of singles, remember? After a little bit of searching, we located the fish. And at that point, when I know they're under the boat, with the, what's happened in the last couple of years, my go-to tactic is gonna be to deploy a dead flying fish. These are out. So what I've been doing lately is I've been catching the corner of the gill right there, uh -huh. like right about there, yeah, and you're gonna have spot. to fight. As soon as we rolled up in the zone, Ollie knew exactly what we were gonna do. He had seen this scenario before. He was extremely positive that the dead flyer was the way to go. Now it's time to really ring the dinner bell. For whatever reason, over the last couple of seasons, they have really preferred the dead flying fish. Makes no sense to me. I don't know what it is, but I'm not here to question it. It's a great way to catch them. So we set up and we switch gears. So I'm gonna hold this till it gets out a little bit. Pulls it out of your hand. Try and lay it over the right side, too. It's just such a cool bite, too. I mean, here we are. You're staring right at oh, it. Oh, yeah, you're, you're not going to miss these bites. And it's just like that roll. We deploy the dead flyer, and we wait. And in this case, we didn't have to wait very long. Oh, there oh, he is. Hit. Did it go down? Did it go down? No, wait, 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 wait. Waiting. He's got it. He's got it. Hit him. Hit it's him. There. It's there. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Go to three, not four. Once you come tight, remember. The whole theory with the dead flyer is the fish are seeing that silhouette. They're obviously up at a certain depth because they're feeding. Oh, yeah, that didn't, take, that didn't take so long. That being said, they have incredible eyesight. So they're seeing that silhouette. And Ollie and I both agree that there's something in a bluefin tuna's DNA where they cannot resist the flying fish. Oh That's a big one. That was a nice one. Big one. Came up like a big fat turd and ate that thing. Oh, the clicker off or on? Off. Okay, here comes the clip. You might have to get fancy here in a second. Hold on, hold on. Okay, it's just you and him. Ah, uh, it's too much fun. 
You can get them to the bow rutch and just sit on them. All right. You ever tag a tuna before, homie? No. This should get interesting. Neither have I. I can move the boat for you, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I'd rather. Okay, let me move you up to the bow. We're gonna want to tire them out more than we normally would, you know? Do run the deal, because we want this fish nice and tired. All right. I mean, I can take the rod, and you can reach down there, try to unhook them. Tagging part, I have, I'm not afraid of at all. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sticking my hands I, in the mouth of a nice 250 or something. That was a good fish. I wasn't a small one. So I didn't put a stainless hook on there on purpose. I used a cold steel hook. So, you know, even if we can't get our hands down in the fish's mouth to get the hook back, um, hopefully we can just go ahead and, you know, if we have to, we can cut it out, but that'll sort of be a last resort. Sure. And he's right there. Oh, we can get the hook right out of this dude. Right out. <laughs> okay, so let's just get the tag in. It's probably going to piss him off. Bring him both side. Can you walk them up a little bit? Back this way. And do another spiral. I'll bring them right up to you. Man, I don't think that's the same fish I saw below. Might not be. I don't think it was. I saw a big back. There we go. So he's tagged. Tags in. Oh, he didn't like that. No, I wouldn't expect him to. <laughs> he did not like that. Here, come back. Let me have the leader. I'm going to give you the pliers. I'll do the wire. You do the hook. How's that sound? So what am I going to do? Just put this We're in gonna the We're going to go free spool holder. clicker on once I get the leader. Oh, this guy is healthy as all get out. Clicker is on. I Perfect got it. Perfect tag placement. Where are the pliers? Just come right here. Around, on the other side of me? Other side? Oh, he's going to free himself here. One of the things that Rush and I quickly learned on this trip is we are much better at killing bluefin tuna than we are at releasing bluefin tuna. Why don't you let me handle the line? OK. And you just focus on the hook. Once you get the hook, let me know. I'll take the pressure off. Watch those teeth and that other hook. The I other probably hook. don't have to tell you that. You want me to grab the fish? <sighs> there we go. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just a whole nother set of tactics and, and challenges. These are said and done, huh? There you go, dude. Tagged our first tuna. That wasn't too bad. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, AFCO, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. I'm gonna bump us forward just a little bit. Skip them around. No, our drift, drift changed it just a hair. Leave it right there. Maybe I will just bump troll it. You want me to turn the kite off? Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I saw one blow I, up I down saw swell. That too. Yeah. I've been seeing, I have been seeing them. I'm just missed it. it, missed it. Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, we're bit, we're bit. He's on it now. Now wind. That feels like coming right Yeah, you're coming tight. There goes the clip. What's this whenever you fish with me, buddy? You know, coming off of our last trip where we drove around basically for a day and a half and never even had a bite, never even metered a fish, I mean, which was a total failure. Having multiple bites and multiple shots, for us, that was just kind of a little victory, you know? This is what you call tuna town right here. I mean, total time for two bites, 15 minutes. Does it get any better than this? I feel pretty good about that. Every trip, every experience you learn from, you learn every day out on the water. You never stop learning. And even though this trip, you know, we, we got the spaghetti tag in these fish, well, the next time out, we, we hope to get these satellite tags in the fish. Front at least that, hook. At least that flying fish didn't go to waste. No, I'm stoked, honestly. Maybe we just need one hook, man. You know, after these two trips were all said and done, there's no way we could say we hit a home run, but I feel pretty good about hitting a double. Look at how fat that fish is, dude. Butterball. Yep. He just woke up. 
There you go. Later, dude. That was pretty cool. He swam he out here off. hot. You know, we were able to go out, we were able to provide some data to the scientific community. We we're able to kind of do our part, which I love to do. You know, Rush is into that too, man. We don't have to kill every fish that we catch. And hopefully the data that's provided by these fish will help the anglers and will help the scientific community and help us protect and preserve this awesome species. So cool though, handling a big fish like that next to the boat and that's then watching them swim off. Crazy. I mean, you reach a point in your life, you know, you've killed so many where it's I nice know. to see a couple swim off. And Trying to find out what's going to happen. Where's that fish going to go now? I mean, dude, if the, that tag turns up, we'll be oh, beside yeah. ourselves. That'll that be, be so awesome. cool. So cool.